Opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In Him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And given freely as a gift to all who obey Him, we understand that if you do not obey Him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's uh, go ahead and open up to, where are we opening up to? What were we talking about last week? Why am I screen going back? Solomon. Ah, yeah. Solomon, right? Remember we talked a little bit about Solomon. Solomon took the kingdom. He started to lay down judgment. All the stuff that his father saw. Remember we talked about, uh, uh, remember Joab, the first one his father mentioned, right? David was like, listen, you know what I'm saying? You know it ain't appropriate for you to let Joab go to the grave normally. You know what I'm saying? Like, that boy got to get it. So Solomon had to go ahead and make sure he got it. Then it was Shimei. Remember Shimei was throwing rocks at David? David was like, yeah, Shimei, now you do it now according to your wisdom, but... The boy got to get it. So you remember he locked Shimei, Solomon locked Shimei up and told him, here, you build you a house and don't you darn leave. He left. You know what I'm saying? He left. Uh, I think it was what? He left like, like Hebron? He went to a guy. You know what I'm saying? So he left. Or somewhere in the Philistines land looking for, looking for a servant. Then he came back. All right, now when he left, Solomon heard that he left. So he went out and got his butt. You know what I'm saying? Killed him. You know what I'm saying? He told him, you good as long as you stay. You know what I'm saying? You leave. It's your problem then, right? Then after that, uh, uh, we learned about how Solomon started to multiply the horses, right? And then we learned the law. The law told him specifically, if you have a king, he should not multiply the horses, right? So we just saw that, you know, Solomon got a little money, you know what I'm saying? Got a little riches, you know what I'm saying? Got his little empire going. He started collecting his horses, just like we collect cars and all that. So now we're going to kind of kind of look at some of the other mistakes that he made later on in his life. But it, before we get straight to that, let's, let's jump, uh, let's get a... Uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. Let's do 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. We're going to shoot through this real quick. We ain't spend a whole lot of time tonight. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. Daniel, you don't mind past the collection plate around. <laughs> Let me tell you how much I got. You know what I'm saying? Pass it. Go ahead and pass that collection plate. Right. The Lord needed money at the time. You don't come off. All right. Mama Kate, you just pretend. Ten percent. Break out the calculator if you need to. Be people to mess up darn up, didn't you? How you out here? Hey, what I'm trying to say. How you collect ten percent from these people every week? Like <laughs> that? That's nuts. That's nuts. You collect 10%. The book tell us we pay a tie. How often did we do it? Like once a year, wasn't it? Every three darn years. You get 10% every three years. They want 10% every, every week, bro. Wasn't that, wasn't that uh, Let me tell you three something. years on uh, Passover, was it? Oh, uh, that I everybody? cannot remember. Or was it? There? I don't know if it was connected to a piece. Was it the tabernacle? Oh. At least not in the text. It maybe it is, and I just I may not have noticed. I don't know if I remember it being connected I to a piece. Paul was coming down to the land. He was getting his stuff ready. Well, yeah, that was the that was a that was a Pentecost, but I don't know if that was the tide. That was just a collection okay. because we always we always collected for our uh, our feast anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? The people always gave for the feast anyway. Um, but you look at the ten percent. You know that was like a free will. You know what I'm saying? But that ten percent. You know what I'm saying? That that thing that's crucial. Every week. These people, these people are crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, where are we up? First Kings, First Kings chapter eight, verse one. First Kings chapter eight, verse one. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all. Cares Salgado. You know what I mean? Oh, she was uh, she was out here last week. Oh uh, yeah, we wouldn't know. <laughs> I hope you, I hope you listening. 
That's the part she tuned out on. You disgusting for picking the nail, licking all that nail crumbs all over. It's disgusting. Oh, what? I'm just. What are you nasty. About? He's a nasty butt. I know that. There's <laughs> stuff in my nail. I had to pick it out. It's the gorgeous. <laughs> <This, laughs> all right. This is 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes of the chief and the fathers of the children of Israel uh -huh. to King Solomon in Jerusalem that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord out of the city of David, which is in Zion. Uh -huh. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto, the, unto King Solomon at the feast in the mount in the month Ethanim, mm -hmm. which is the seventh month. Ethanim, the seventh month. Mm -hmm. What do we celebrate in the seventh month? In gathering, right? In gathering, what else? Tabernacle. That's the same thing. Yeah. In gathering tabernacle, right? So we got it. We got our eight days a celebration. What else are we celebrate in the seventh month? What did the seventh month start with? Feast of trumpets, right? Uh, right. You got the day of trumpets. So that's what it start off with. Then you count ten days, and you get what? On the tenth day of the seventh month, we get what? Tabernacle. Then we get day of atonement. Right, and then we got a fast, and after that you count five additional days, right? And on the fifteenth day of the month, then you get the ingathering of the Feast of Tabernacles, right? So this is what we seven up, setting up for. We're in the seventh month right now. Watch this. And the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark, mm -hmm. and they brought up the ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation and the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon and the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. There's a whole bunch of things, what he's saying. There's a whole bunch of things. Nobody know the number. They were so much. Keep going. And the priest brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord unto his place, unto the oracle of the house of the most holy place, mm -hmm. even under the wings of the cherubims. Mm -hmm. And the cherubim spread forth their two wings over the place of the Ark, and the cherubims covered the Ark and the staves thereof above. All right? This is talking about the temple that Solomon just built. All right? So David, David sat with Solomon. He was like, listen, I couldn't get this done. I was a bloody man. You know what I'm saying? But you got to finish this thing out for me. So he gave all the material. David thought he gave all the materials that, that Solomon needed. What well, Solomon took from that, he added even more materials onto it. And he said, you know what, let's go ahead and get it done. All right? Then he built himself an even bigger house. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna say nothing about that though. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know what I'm saying? He went ahead and then he said, okay, after it's done, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant in. So they bring it in. What else happened? And they drew out the staves at, that the ends of the staves were seen out of the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without. Mm -hmm. And there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two staves of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. Okay, so it was a cloud that came down mm -hmm. and it filled up the house of the Lord mm -hmm. and the priests couldn't stand there because of the cloud? Yep. Okay, what else? Then, then spake Solomon... The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. So now we see a thick darkness, darkness, and the Lord said he would dwell in it. Let's see if this line up with our law, right? That's how we have to look at stuff, right? When stuff happens, we have to be able to look at it and be like, ooh, does that line up with the... Grab a... Uh, uh, what? Hmm, what does dwell mean? Live, to stay, remain. So you're dwelling on my couch right now. Very comfortably, might I add. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, let's grab. Uh, what I want to grab? I have something on my mind just now. Exit. I do want to grab Exodus, but um, what was I thinking about? Read, read what you just read before. The Lord said that He would dwell in the thick darkness. All right, uh, let's go there. Uh, no, Isaiah, Isaiah 8, right? Because we are talking about, you look at it, and we have to be able to look at stuff and say, does this line up with the law, right? Does this line up with the law? We have to look at, somebody, it's going to come a time when people are going to be doing amazing things. They're going to be looking at stuff, they're going to be doing all these little magic tricks, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, I don't want to tell the movie now, you know what I'm saying? I just want y'all to know, Dr. Strange is the best, you know what I'm saying? But you imagine somebody just coming out 
and then Doctor Strange in you, you know what I'm saying, today, and then saying the Lord's name with it, it's just king, 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 you know what I'm saying, doing all that stuff. <laughs> then the thing just spinning around their head, and they're like, I'm coming in the name of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Or they hit you up with the spinning wheel, you know what I'm saying? Just open something up. Everybody just jumping out of that thing. They be like, yeah, I came in the name of the Lord. We see something like that, we gonna be like, that's God's man. You know what I'm saying? That's God's man. But then we have to look, us, we have to look and be like, okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does that line up with the book at all? You know what I'm saying? That at any point, does the book say you should, this is gonna happen? Or is this, you know, that, is that how it's gonna look? When God sent a man, is he gonna be doing all this? You know what I'm saying? Is he gonna be opening up portals? Like, where did we get that from? So then if it's not in the book, it's not that we just wholly reject it, but we take our time. We'd be like, all right, you know what I'm saying? You're doing something, but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm jury still out on you, right? That's how the book raises us. So it's important that we look at things that way. It's Isaiah chapter 8, what I want, verse 20? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we can start at 16. You won't. Bind up the testimony, mm -hmm. seal the law among my disciples, uh -huh. and I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Ain't no value in being a Christian. It just doesn't make sense. Why am I going to call myself a Muslim? It just doesn't make sense. Who is the law sealed up with? The disciples. Who did he bind up the testimony with? The disciples. So I'm sitting here, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm a... Seventh day Adventist, I'm a I'm a I'm a Catholic, I'm a, all these different things. And the whole time the book saying law and the testimony ain't sealed up with nobody other than disciples. Why does nobody call themselves disciples? It's flat. I mean sometimes it's just like it's just too easy. Like, nah, it's just too regular. Let's go for the hype. Let's create something. That don't make no sense. The book telling you what you need to be, guess what? They walk right past it and go for some man made. Mm. You're a disciple, you gotta actually live up to something, huh? You can't make your own rules. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so this is what? Verse what? 17? 18. 18? Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Uh oh. From the Lord of hosts, which dwells in Mount Zion. Mm hmm. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Okay. Now the people seek unto their God. Doctor Strange come around. He gets to doing all that wizardry and all that special stuff. You seek unto him. Most high God looking like. Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you seek after your God? What did he do that lines up with anything I told you? Anything that you read from what's minded up with the with the disciples? Anything from the testimonies? Anything from the law? What did he do that lines up with it? Okay, that's good. For the living to the dead. He said, for the living to the dead. To the law and to the testimony. He said, to the law and to the testimony. What happened? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That thing got to line up. It has to line up. There's no other way. You know what I'm saying? It has to line up. So now, you see Solomon, right? Solomon setting up a new temple. Everybody's who ran, because this is something big. This is special, right? But how in the world do we know that Solomon's temple is really what God wants? Well, guess what? A cloud came down. And the cloud came down in such a way that the priest couldn't even minister in the house because that cloud came down. And then Solomon jumped out and he said, Ah, Lord, you said that you would dwell in the thick darkness. Now, Solomon could just be running his mouth if we don't know our law. If we don't recognize what that cloud is, that cloud could just be anything. That could be some sorcery. Could be magic. Dr. Strange could be in the building, right? We don't know. So now let's look at the book. Right? This is Exodus chapter 40. What on, 43 or 40? Let's try 40 first. Exodus chapter 40. So what's the cloud, TJ? Give me 32. You mean the cloud? What about the cloud? What would the people do? Exodus chapter 40, verse 32. When they went into the tent of the congregation, and when, they, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. Mm -hmm. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle on the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. See, this is the tabernacle, right? This is the, this is the tent version of it. 
Right, it's Moses. He's setting it up. He reared up the court as like a border. Think of it like a little a gate, like a little fence. You know what I'm saying? It's like a square fence that went around it. Then after that, he reared up what? He reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. Mm -hmm. So Moses finished the work. Mm -hmm. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the See, Lord. See, remember, this is the, the first tabernacle. tabernacle, right? It's our first tabernacle. And what happened? The cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Keep going. And Moses was not, a, was not able to enter into the tent of Whoa. the congregation. So we have two things that happened. A cloud came, and it prevented the man doing the work from entering in. So Moses wasn't able to go in because of the cloud. So we fast forward. Let's go back over, uh, let's go back over to, uh, to 1 Kings 8. If we fast forward, it takes us, and it says, a cloud came, and guess what? We wasn't able to work. The priests weren't able to work. Let's read it again. If you know the law, you recognize this. You say, you know what? This lines up with exactly how that was when Moses set up the tabernacle. Now, this is a more advanced tabernacle. This is a temple. But the same thing happened with God. That's God's approval. We believe Moses. We trust Moses. That's solidified. Right? So now we move on. Fast forward. The same thing happens again because now the Most High God said, the same thing I did with the man you trust is the same thing I'm doing here. This is my stamp. I approve it. The same way I approved it back then. Right? But if we don't know our law, we don't catch this stuff. We just mosey on the loan like, oh, okay. Right? Let's see what happened. Let's make sure it all lined up. It's 1 Kings chapter 8 verse what? 10. It's 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 10. Watch the book say. it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Uh-huh. So that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. Right. For the so, glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Right. So just like Moses, they had to back up. Right. So TJ, you back here. I don't know. Let's think about it. Let's go to Luke chapter uh, 9. This is Luke chapter 9, verse 27. We're just going to shoot through this real quick. I thought you were cold. So you, I know what happened. You got hot underneath that darn cover. That is a hot cover. You go to sleep in that thing. Like sometimes I fall asleep in that thing and like it don't cover my whole body. It don't cover like half of it. That whole half is darn sweaty. That day be like, goodness gracious. Or sometimes this sweaty butt right here, this is a black boy, you know what I'm saying? Like he'll fall asleep in that thing. His whole body is just drenched up there. I was like, goodness gracious. That's how I think it do. That's a, that's a super hot cover. This is uh this is uh Luke chapter nine verse twenty seven. What does the book say? But I tell you of a truth. This is Yahushua talk. He said, "I'm telling you the truth." There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass about eight days after those these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. Mm -hmm. And as he prayed, the passion of his countenance was altered, mm -hmm. and his raiment was white and glistening. Okay. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, mm -hmm. who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Uh huh. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. Uh huh. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. They saw the glory. So hold on. Before we read any further, what did the priest say filled the temple? A cloud, and what they call it? The glory of the Lord. They said it was filled with the glory of the Lord. So now Peter and who was that? James and John. I mean, James and John and Peter, right? They looked and they saw the glory of the Lord. Right? Okay, let's see what happens next. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Yahshua, Master, it is good for us to be here. It's good for us to be here. Master, I'm happy we're here. Right? What else happened? Let us make you tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what he said. He didn't know what he was darn talking about. Watch this. Excuse me. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they... There came what? There came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. So now this is tabernacle, right? Tabernacle one. Moses set it up. Cloud came down. Right? Temple, number two, cloud came down. And then what did Yahushua say he was? The temple. His body. 
He said his body was the temple. He said, destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days. He just came down with uh with Nehemiah and them too. I don't think it did, but it may have. I don't remember it. I don't remember it coming down, but it may have. Um, so we look at it. He says that he's gonna be the temple, and the cloud comes down. Just when he says, surely some of y'all right here. Y'all ain't gonna taste death until y'all see the kingdom of God come in all his glory. In another, in another place to say in all his glory. Right? So you look at it, and there they see. They see the glory of God in the form of a cloud come down. And when they entered it, they feared. Right? Remember, Moses feared so much he didn't even go in. Right? Then you see uh the priests, they feared so much they didn't, you know what I'm saying? They, they didn't mess with it. But they had Yahushua right there with them. So they feared, but they entered. Right? That's the difference. All these things we look at, it, right? The whole book testify who? Yes, sir. Got to. Got to. Every time we read this, that's what it got to come back to. Let's go back. Where we at? 1 Kings 8, 12. All right. This is 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in a thick darkness. Mm -hmm. I have surely built you a house to dwell in, in a settled place for you to abide in forever. Mm -hmm. And the king turned his face about and blessed the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He said, blessed be, this is a prayer. He said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Which spake with his mouth unto David my father. Uh -huh. And with his hand fulfilled it. Saying, since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be there. Mm -hmm. But I choose David to be over my people Israel. He said, I choose David to be over the people, right? And it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Okay. And the Lord said to David, my father, why is it where, where it was in your heart to build a house unto my name? You did well that it was in your heart. He said, he said... Bless your little heart, right? That's what he told. That's what God told. He said, "Bless your little heart that it was even there for you to build a house for me." Right? What happened? Keep going. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, mm -hmm. but your son shall come forth out of your loins. He shall build the house unto my name. Okay. And the Lord has performed His word that He spake. What was y'all? I mean, what was the Most High God talking about? He talking about y'all sure. He really talking about y'all sure. Right? He talking about both. But in the end of it, this was just a build up to get you to y'all sure. Right? So he said, you know what I'm saying, your son gonna come out, he gonna build it. Okay, keep going. And I am risen up in the room of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hand toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath who keeps the covenant and mercy with your servants that walk before you with all their heart, mm -hmm. who has kept with your servant David, my father, that you promised him. You speak also with my mouth and has fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now, Lord God of Israel, keep with your servant David, my father, that you promised him, saying, there shall not fail a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel. Right. So that your children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as you have walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let your word, I pray, be verified, which you speak unto your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold, the heaven and heavens of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Mm -hmm. Yet have you respect unto the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to listen unto the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you today. Watch this. That your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which you have said, My name shall be there. Mm -hmm. That you may listen unto the prayer which your servant shall make towards this place. And listen you and also listen to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel, when they shall pray towards this place, and hear you in heaven, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Right? So that's why we pray towards that place. You know what I'm saying? We talk about we pray to the east. 
That's why. He said, listen to the supplication of your servants that pray towards this place. Right? Keep going. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath came before your altar in this house, then hear you in heaven, and do and judge your servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. Mm -hmm. When your people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against you. So when our people get smitten down, we get beat up, right? When our place get taken over, when we get conquered. He said, what happened now? And spin down before the enemy because they have sinned against you and shall turn again to you mm -hmm. and confess your name and pray and make supplication unto you in this house. So if we lose a war, but in the midst of that war, we confess and we repent. What else? Then hear you in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them again into the land which you gave to their fathers. Okay, keep going. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray towards this place and confess your name mm -hmm. and turn from their sin when when you afflict them, mm -hmm. then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and your people Israel, that you teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon your land, which mm -hmm. you have given unto your people for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication so ever be made by any man or by all your people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hand towards this house. Mm -hmm. Then here in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, mm -hmm. whose heart you know, for even you only know the hearts of all the children of men, mm -hmm. that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave unto their fathers. Mm -hmm. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of this people. He said, even the ones that's a stranger, even the Gentiles, the ones that's not of this people. What else? But comes out of a far country for your name's sake. Okay. For they shall hear of your great name. They're going to hear about you, Lord. And, and they're going to come from a far place. And what else? And of your strong hand and of your stretched out arm. Okay. When he shall come and pray towards his house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calls you for. Mm-hmm. That all people of the earth may know your name to fear you and do as the people Israel and do your people Israel mm -hmm. as do your people Israel and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemy wheresoever you shall send them and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which you have chosen and toward the house that I have built for your name mm -hmm. and hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no man that sins not, and you be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captive unto a land of the enemy, far or near, yet if, if, they, shall, yet if right? they shall bethink themselves in a land where they uh, were carried captives. You know what I mean when the books say, if they shall bethink themselves? Remember. That's all he's talking about. Remember. You come to remember. They, If you in a faraway land, I would just describe it. They, they sin against you. And they come, they end up being taken captive to a faraway land. And if they be think to themselves, in other words, they remember who they are. What do you think Solomon was talking? You think Solomon knew what he was talking about when he was saying this? Told you, run the darn mouth. Like, oh Lord, let me try to cover every situation I can think of. He just run the darn mouth. Most of our God knew what was going on though. He was like, yeah, somebody write that down. Because if they be think themselves, what's gonna happen? If they be, if they remember themselves in a land where they have carried away captives and repent. And make supplication unto you in the land of them that carry them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, mm -hmm. which led them away captive, and pray unto you toward their land, mm -hmm. which you gave unto their fathers, the city which you have chosen, mm -hmm. and the house which I have built for your name. Mm -hmm. Then hear you their prayer and their supplication in the heaven, in heaven your dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And that's why we pray. That's why we pray facing that direction. He said, even in the captive, when we captive with our enemies in our enemies' land, right? He said, if they bethink themselves, which is what we're trying to do, we're trying to bethink ourselves. And if we pray in that direction, towards the city that he chose, towards the temple that he built, that calls out for his name, he said, well, you know what? Pay attention to him, right? We ain't got to get it, but in the uh, next chapter, or in, it might be in Chronicles, most of our God came back and he said, all right, right? He, he responded to him. He said, I hear you. Then he said, if my people, this is where, you know, Christian get it from. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, 
Right? I'll look out for them. So that's why we do it, right? We super, it's a lot of people, we've been superstitious about lots of you knock on darn wood, don't split a pole. What's all the superstition these people do? All types of superstitions that they go. Don't kill a cream, don't break a darn glass, or what is it? Something about mirror. Yeah, mirror. Don't let a black a black cat, don't let it cross your path. For all these different things, we we real, like, we look at it like, ooh, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? We superstitious about a lot of stuff. When it comes to the book, let's be superstitious. The book say, play, pray to the east when you're in the land of kill. Well, I'm in the land of my darn enemy. Pray towards They not our enemy? They said pray towards Jerusalem. So if we were somewhere else, we wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, it wouldn't be east if we, you know what I'm saying, just saying relative to where we are. You're right, yeah, relative to where we are. Now, if you in like, you know what I'm saying, Japan or something, they're going to be to the west. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying, as long as you, you know what I'm saying, on the right side of it, relative to where you are, you pray towards the land. Right? That's what Ali told him, though. He was like, well, I'm going to go fight some Viet Cong. You know what I'm saying? He said, you my enemy. You know what I'm saying? You my enemy when I want freedom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You my oppressor. You know what I'm saying? When I want, uh, when I want something. You know what I'm saying? Equality. Yeah. yeah. He was like, you know what I'm saying? He knew. When I want justice. This is the land of the enemy. We in the land of our enemy. I don't care how cozy up they try to be towards us. So they give us that check. You know what I'm talking about? You the land of the land of the enemy. Give me that check. You give me that check, then we can be friends. You know what I'm talking about? You pay up, you know what I'm saying? You pay up what you supposed We can be friends after that, but right now it's a debt. What you talking about? In the land of my enemy, you owe me. You brought me here captive and you still owe me. We can't be friends. It's a debt. I'll forget a debt, but God ain't. You paying for that thing, one way or another. Right? Let's get up out of here. Any questions? All right, let's pray out.